Welcome to Weld.com. Playing around with a ESOB 235 Rebel. Going to do some stick welding procedures here. And uh, a viewer had asked about doing a 6G, uh, 6 inch 6G root. So I've got this set up on a 45 close to it. And I just want to reach up underneath here. I'll probably get down on one knee. For technique, I always like to point the rod into the center of the pipe and maintain that angle, whether I'm having to do a stitch or I'm just doing a straight drag and letting the keyhole blow out around the rod, fill it and go. This is so much faster than doing a 7018 route for me. The one thing I noticed, I'm not gonna be starting with this rod right here because about four inches into this, got no flux. So I think some of you've done that before where you get a low hydrogen electrode and you put it in the electrode holder and we're welding away and all of a sudden it just blows out on one side. Flux is gone or something. It's a good, just check them each time. I know it takes a little bit of time extra to do that, but man, I've saved myself some, some mistake time from just kind of glancing at them and see if maybe they were mishandled or dropped and somebody stepped on them and knocked this off. I'm not sure why this happened, but interesting anyway let me get my uh let me get my hood on i'll be right back we'll turn and burn on this uh on this route here have a little fun all right let's have a little fun electrode again. Apparently I'm getting pretty good at that. I did do a 5 amp change on my amperage up here on top. I'm trying to do a little stitch to keep this keyhole going. That went pretty quick. I like it. Welcome back. I have a, a root pass in with a, a, a heavy wall six inch pipe. I put in with eighth inch 6010, about 80 amps. I had a fair gap in here and I had about uh, a 16th of 332 root face on here. We've already shot the uh, the root pass for the, the B-roll, and it looks like it's in there. It's got, a, it's got a couple of bumps in it. I'm gonna go in with this next pass, gonna be a fill pass with a 330 second 7018. And I just wanna get some more meat in here before I start putting the eighth inch 7018 fill passes in. I'm running at 80 amps again. I'm gonna spend some time out on the beveled edge. If I weave at all, I'm gonna be weaving level with the floor. So it's going to be kind of going to be kind of odd. I've got options of doing multiple stringer beads and grinding the toes of my weld. I just want to start this one out, 
because of the heavy wall and the groove spacing and the amount of meat I got to put in here, I think I want to put this first fill pass in and then I want to stack two eighth inch 7018 fill passes in in stringers. I'm doing a very slight weave in here, very slight, back and forth on the toe of the previous weld. Again, I just want to get some meat in here so when I turn the amperage up, I don't take a chance of blowing through this, this root. I did grind the toe of the weld to get the wagon tracks out. I did not run a hot pass on this one. Normally when I do this in the field or take a test, I do run a 6010 hot pass. Today I've opted not to do that. I went straight to low hydrogen fill. I had put a wire wheel on that stop when I was coming up the side of the pipe. This is actually my second rod. Hopefully I'll make it to the top, but I doubt it. You notice my rod angle, I'm actually transitioning back and oh, it's almost like I'm pointing it downhill a little bit, dragging it up. Again, I'm trying to keep a short, steady arc. This will be my first fill pass with the 8th inch 7018. I'll run two stringers in here. Running an 8th inch 7018 at 100 amps. Very little movement side to side. And I'm trying to leave myself enough room on this bottom uh, part of the bead so that I can fit my first bead of my cap. And I want to fill this groove consistently, leave it fairly flat. Flush, I should say. Be a better term. Flat profile after the two beads are in. I can already tell when I run the second beat on top of this that I'm gonna slow way down.
This is my second pass of fills with 7, 8 pin 7018. Travel speed on this bead is probably going to be a, quite a bit lower than the first one. Again, I'm trying to keep these consistent as far as height inside the groove. I did grind deep in the toe of the previous weld to clean out any flag pockets that may have thought they were going to stick behind and don't want them in there I've been uh, buffing my stops I haven't been grinding them yet This is the first pass of the tap. And I had gone in here with the grinder and lightly touched the toe of the weld from the previous two passes on the bottom and I wanted to create that clean shelf in there. Now I realize that sometimes when you're taking this test, after you run your route, you don't get anything but a file. Now that's a little brutal, but <clears throat> some people are kind of strict on this and they just want to see all your craftsmanship. This is the uh, second bead of a three bead cap. Rod angle is kind of referencing back into the center of the pipe. And I'm into the toe of the previous weld. I will go back with a grinder and cut the toe of the top of this weld. And into the last one. Welcome back. This concludes our 6G pipe weld, or heavy wall 6 inch. <clears throat> um, I wish I started doing this back when I was like 38 instead of 58. Um, I'm starting to notice a couple of things about myself here that <laughs> I'm getting kind of old. A uh, couple of things here with rod angle. Uh, I tend to, you know, I'm referencing things off of the bottom of the pipe here, always trying to get towards center. I notice I've got a couple of things about workmanship here. I run this first bead. I like to stagger all my starts and stops. 
you know, in a diagonal. I don't like to stop in the same place. It helps with blends. I do have a little bump right here where when I restarted, to me it looked like it had a little, looked like it was wanting to do porosity and so I was paused and washed through it and I thought that would blend in. It's a little bump. You know, I could take that down with a grinder lightly. Main thing is I don't have any undercut on top and bottom. We don't, we don't want that. Blend, blend is real good up here. It's actually pretty good down here. It's like right here in the middle when I was doing my transition. So with rod angle, uh, you know, when you start down on bottom, you know, I tend to, I tend to do stuff like this. You've also seen me take and bend a rod and that way I can go just about any angle I want to, to get comfortable and you might try that. So it's all about that transition, getting comfortable. Um, you know, if I did this all day, every day, like I used to, I'd be better at it. You know, it's like, it's like bowling. When you bowl eight to 10 games a day, you do better. You're comfortable, you're confident. Golf, any sport, it's the same thing with welding. It's, uh, you know, like I said, uh, the older you get, you kind of get the high speed shimmy. Some of you will attest to that. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll own up to it. So, haven't lost it quite yet. It's just more of a challenge these days, apparently. Shout out to Steiner for the uh, soft buck gloves, 2276. They're very comfortable. Arc One welding hoods. Esob for the Rebel 235. I don't know who made the knee pad, but thank you. That was good. I needed that. Save the old knees. Some of you get a kick out of the slag peel. That was kind of fun too. I like having to just pick it off of there. Now somebody's asked me in the past, actually it somehow turned into a big argument about welding with both hands, one hand. How am I gonna show them how to weld with one hand? I didn't quite follow it all. Let me show you something. You know, I've done a lot of tests like this facing away from me. I don't know that it's ever been stipulated that the test has been facing toward me, okay? It's no big deal. If I had to take the test like this, and I've actually taken it and welded it with both hands, left and right, that's the way I used to do them all the time. But if I had to take this test like this with it facing toward me, then I'm either running one side with it facing, and if I turn over here, it's facing away from me. Okay, if you're gonna weld it with both hands and it's facing toward you, then you'd weld this one with your left hand, this one with your right hand. I've tested a lot of people. I've tested, I've done a lot of 6G pipe welds. I don't mind this in the least, okay? I've, I've stuck a file up here. I've rested my arm on it. What difference does it make? In the field, I have taken a sling and wrapped it around a pipe and stuck my arm in it. It's a brace, big deal. I see people using jack stands. It's okay, it's fine, you know? I don't know, some, of, some people have got some, the, the comments that come back about welding with one hand, both hand, facing toward you, facing away. Some of them I, I just don't understand. Get comfortable. Practice it in all different situations. Practice it in all different angles. You get real frisky, do the restrictor ring thing on there. Uh, I've seen people in uh, uh, take tests where they have got a jig set up and there are tubes set about an inch and a half away in four quadrants around this. That's another part of a restricted test. You know, there's, there's all kinds of possibilities. But learning the fundamentals of this weld the root pass, you can run a hot pass if you want. <clears throat> I, I ground this one out and went straight to fills with low, low hydrogen electrodes. So, appreciate the, I appreciate you watching. I hope this helps out. I hope we all learned something here. Make sure you subscribe to the videos. New videos come out every Monday. Thank you.